Good evening, everyone. It's Reverend Charles Ulick from Grace Episcopal Church. I'm the rector and pastor there, here in Paducah, Kentucky. It's great to be with you this evening as we celebrate this March 23rd. Today we've been commemorating and celebrating uh, the life of Gregory the Illuminator. I'll tell you why we're calling him the Illuminator in just a few moments, but let us put ourselves in God's holy presence as we wind down our day and invite the Lord to be with us in that. We're on page 127 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 127. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all of our sins, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm this evening is a portion of Psalm 33, found on page 626 in your Book of Common Prayer. Page 626, Psalm 33, will be reflecting on verses 6 through 11, also found in your Holy Scriptures in your Bible. Please join me in reciting this psalm together or in the silence of your own meditation. By the word of the Lord, where the heavens were made, by the breath of his mouth, all the heavenly hosts, he gathers up the waters of the ocean as in a water skin and stores up the depths of the sea. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all who dwell in the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to pass, and he commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord brings, all, brings the will of the nations to naught. He thwarts the designs of the peoples. But the Lord's will stands fast forever, and the designs of his heart from age to age. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our scriptures continue this evening with a passage from Mark's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 18 through 22. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and people came and said to Jesus, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them, can they? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth on an old cloth, otherwise the patch pulls away from it and the new from the old, and a worse tear is made. And no one puts new wine, new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst and of the skins, and the wine is lost. And so are the skins, but put new wine in fresh wineskins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is a wonderful passage uh, tonight, uh, as we listen and reflect before we go to bed tonight from Mark's Gospel, because it really goes along with who uh, Gregory the Illuminator was in his lifetime in the 4th uh, fourth, uh, fourth century, in most of the 3rd century. He was uh, 
the one person who brought this the gospel of message of Jesus Christ to the people of Armenia. And we're talking about around the second, uh, third and second century when this happened. And so you're dealing with Christianity is just starting to spring up being called Christians and uh, in places uh, underneath uh, the Roman Empire uh, of Constantine. And so uh, uh, Gregory was born around 257, we believe, and his father was the assassin who killed the Persian king of that period of time. He had to escape and flee with the rest of his family. Unfortunately, his father was killed. Uh, but his name, though, uh, was not very well liked in Persia uh, at, from that time period. And so when Gregory was old enough, he decided, uh, and he had been had married and had some, two children, he decided to come back to Persia, and it was there that he decided and had a conversion experience as a Christian to become ordained. It was about in the year three, uh, 280 uh, when he returned there, and it was from that point he under, under, uh, endured great uh, torture and persecution because of his name and what his father did. But even with all that, he was able to convert uh, the king of, of Persia at that period of time. His name was King uh, Tridates, and he brought him to the faith of Jesus Christ. He spoke of the messages of the stories of Jesus, and it was because of that that the people of Armenia uh, became Christian. But also, uh, Constantine was so impressed with Gregory himself and the Persian king at that time that all of the Roman Empire became soon Christian after that, and the spread of the gospel message of Jesus Christ became wider and broader. And so he was called the Illuminator because he helped enlighten people of who Jesus Christ was. Very similar to our gospel message this evening. If you've been studying God, uh, Mark's gospel like we have been during the season of Lent, you would know that parts of what Jesus is talking about here in Mark's gospel is to help us realize that when we are in God's presence in our prayer time, like this time, or in our own meditation, it is there that God can illumine our hearts and our dreams and our well-being. I hope that Gregory is still being able to illumine your hearts with the message of Jesus Christ and hope uh, he has been an illumination for each and every one of us so we may be enlightened uh, to know Christ in this season of Lent and of our time of looking at our difficulties as well in, in the season. Amen. Let us now continue our prayers for Compline Night Prayer. I'm turning back to page 132, page 132. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And together, my sisters and brothers, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us with the Lord's Prayer. We'll use the traditional version on the left column. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. This is our colic prayer for this day. Almighty God, whose will it is to be glorified in all your saints, who raised up your servant Gregory the Illuminator to be a light in the world and to preach the gospel to the people of Armenia, shine, we pray, in our hearts that we also, in our generation, may show forth your praise who called us out of darkness and into your marvelous light through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, if you join me by turning to page 389 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 389, Prayers of the People, Form 5. Please join me in our prayers this evening. Page 389. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Terry, our bishop here in the Diocese of Kentucky, and wherever you might be, and for our own bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers, and for all who are for the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all who may be one as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, just like Gregory the Illuminator. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace, for, for the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, for our President Joseph Biden, for the Congress and the Senate, for our judicial system, our courts, for that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees and prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, your congregation, or your faith community, for those who are present and for those who are absent, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart, and show forth your glory in all that we do, wherever you may worship. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended, we've been commended to themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in the place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. And for other prayers that we'd like to offer this day, and for those who are heavy on our hearts, if you'd like to uh, uh, post them online, we'll, I'll offer prayers for them after or we're done here. I'd like to especially pray uh, for all those who are celebrating a birthday this week. And especially we pray uh, today for Nora Webb, uh, who celebrated her birthday yesterday. And we pray in thanksgiving for all the blessings of those people who are special in our lives and for those who are on our hearts and minds this day. We'd like to also remember those who have contracted COVID-19 and for the end of this terrible pandemic. We pray for the 900-some people who contracted the virus. Uh, and about 11 or 17 of them uh, did here in uh, McCracken County. We pray, Lord, for a special person, uh, uh, Sarah Holland's uncle named Bo. We pray for him as he's being treated for covid in the hospital at this time. We pray for all those at Rivercrest, the Lakes, Gaither Suites, and the Episcopal Church Homes in Louisville, and for those at Parkview and 
Heritage Manor in Mayfield. We pray for all those who are in assisted living and nursing facilities, wherever you might be. We pray, Lord, that you may bless those residents and all those who are caring for them as well. We pray for Lori Copeland, uh, who's had a little bit of a setback. We pray for her, for Charles Turok, who's on hospice. We pray for Teresa Wilson, for my, uh, for, uh, my nephew, uh, John Ulick, uh, who had a concussion and is getting well. We pray for Nancy Fowler Black, for Liz Story, for Reverend Nick Yeager, uh, who's recovering from a fall. We pray for Reverend John Allen, for uh, Jimmy. We pray for him. We pray for Faye, my neighbor, who's recovering from surgery still. We pray for Dick Roberts, who's in the hospital at this time. I pray for my friend, Fane. I pray for my wife, Susie. I pray for Darlene Pigford, who's also in the hospital at this time. I pray for Jim Zelmer and for his family, and all those who are battling cancer. We pray for my sister-in-law, Sherry Ulick. I pray for Reverend Libby Wade, for Reverend Dorothy Hartzog, for Kelly Curtis Walker, for Tommy, for Sam Whit Whitus, whose cancer has returned and is be having a procedure soon. We pray for Patty and Phil, for the, all those who are battling cancer. We pray for our doctors and nurses and all those who are caring for our loved ones. We pray, Lord, for first responders, our police officers, especially you know, the police officer's family who uh, unfortunately was killed uh, murdered by uh, the person in Georgia uh, over the weekend. We pray for and all the other victims uh, for uh, in, the, in Boulder, Colorado. We pray for them and for the mourning of all those loved ones in Atlanta, Georgia, as well. And we pray for peace in our in our country with uh, guns and and we pray and ask your blessings to be with those families at this time, Lord. We pause for those all who've died because of COVID-19. We pray for them at this time. And for all of our loved ones who have passed away, we remember. Yet we rejoicing in the fellowship of, the, of the, all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us turn back now to page 134, page 134 at the bottom of that page. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with, be with us and bless us and keep us. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I hope you've had a wonderful night and hope you have a great sleep so that you may awake refreshed and renewed once again with our God with you. Remember that God loves each and every one of you. Please join me as I welcome and thank God for every one of you because you are very precious to me and as we pray together. Please join me again tomorrow evening at 9 p.m as we wind down our day. And also tomorrow at noon, we'll be celebrating a midday worship service with Holy Eucharist. 
you're welcome to join me online or come down to Grace Episcopal Church at noon uh, where we'll be uh, having a worship midday service. It's about a 30-minute service, so it's not too long. But I hope you can join me as well on, uh, on Facebook as well. You have a great night and sweet dreams.